We're going to try to describe what is infinity in 10 minutes or less. A lot of people think of infinity as just being some massive idea. Uh, but you can think of this in lots of different ways. Maybe a good example uh, to give you an idea of what infinity might actually be is think about, uh, you know, some people might think it's like really big, like, uh, you know, maybe how many sand kernels there are on the sun on the seashore or how many planets there are or, or stars there are in the Milky Way galaxy. But actually none of those numbers, either of those numbers are not even close to how big infinity actually means. But let's talk about where do we get with it, get at infinity and what do mathematicians even mean by it? And it turns out it has to do with counting. Okay. Now, if you have two sets and you want to count them, if the sets are small, it's not too bad. For example, if I have like a big set here with maybe one, two, and three, and four, and another set here with a, a star, <coughs> maybe a, a square, and maybe one of those cool like, let's say Star Trek symbol, maybe that's Space Force now, uh, and then maybe a circle in here. <coughs> now, I can count these guys over here by going one, two, three, four, but what that really is, is an arrow assignment from each of these numbers here associated with each of these shapes. So I've got one, two, three, four like that. And you can see all these assignments here. And that works really nice when I've actually got these numbers that mean something and I can count them. But what if my two sets didn't actually have numbers in them? Like what if I got rid of in this second set here? What if instead of having those, I had other shapes like maybe a triangle uh, and maybe a hexagon and <clears throat> maybe an oval over here. And uh, I don't know what it's another good shape, maybe a half moon. Okay. Now, look at this. I no longer am counting exactly with numbers, but I am kind of assigning each of these guys one of these things over here. And so, like, for example, I can go triangle, hexagon, oval, half moon. And those things is assigning one of these names over here to each of these guys over there. And as long as my assignment is perfect, meaning that every single guy here gets exactly one guy assigned over there so that they're always on, you know, if you want, you think of them as being on a date. As long as they're always attached to each other like that, <coughs> um, every single one of these guys gets one of those and all these guys are used and all these guys are used and everybody's got exactly one pair then they're in what we call a one-to-one -one correspondence. You can kind of see how this might be defeated. If I add another shape here so that these two guys don't have the same number of elements anymore, the problem is this guy doesn't have anybody to pair up with. And so I can identify uh, whether or not two sets have the same number of elements, but whether or not there's a pairing like this, okay? And I can do that without actually counting, which is really helpful when you're talking about something like infinity. If you wanna know if two sets, two infinite sets are equal to each other or have the same number of elements in some sense, what you can do is set up a pairing like this where everybody gets assigned exactly one guy. I use everything in this set and I use everything in this set and everybody has exactly one pair. And I get this sort of one-to-one -one correspondence <coughs> like that then that means that they have the same number of elements. With finite numbers, it's real easy to see because if I have too many guys here, like that diamond I had a second ago, I can't make that one-to-one -one correspondence anymore. So what happens if I try to do this with an infinite set? I think maybe the most canonical infinite set would be the set of counting numbers. So if I just write those out, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I go on forever. <clears throat> that right there has a start, but it doesn't have an end. There's no largest number here. In fact, if somebody tried to tell you there was a largest number, you could say, well, add one to it and you have a larger one. So there really is no larger number here, okay? No matter how far you go, you can always find larger numbers. Now, you think of the largest number of the unit that you can possibly think of. For example, a Google is one with a hundred zeros after it. To give you an idea on the size of that, a billion is one with nine zeros after it. So imagine how big a number one with a hundred zeros after it would be. A Googleplex is one with a Google zeros after it. <clears throat> the problem with numbers like that is while they're insanely big and just totally beyond our comprehension, they're actually not even close to as big as infinity is. Because you can do the, we got the Googleplex by doing 10 to the Google power. Well, you can do 10 to the Google to the Google power, and it's just, it's even bigger, but it's still no closer to infinity. So infinity is a really, really big number, goes out there really, really far. Well, what if I wanted to compare this to another infinite set? <clears throat> Say like the even numbers, which are actually a subset of those guys, but let's write them out. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on. 
Now that's another infinite set, starts at two and goes on. And in fact, this is actually a subset of these guys. You can see them, two, four, six, and then eight, 10, and 12 are down here as well. But watch what happens when I try to assign them, like do a one-to-one -one correspondence like we did with the pictures and the shapes. Well, if I assign these guys together, and then I assign these guys together, and these guys, and these guys, and these guys, and these guys, and I do that forever, notice I use every single element here, and I use every single element there. Everybody has exactly one pair, and nobody is missing a pair. So for example, you can actually write this down. You can write it as a function. You can say, <clears throat> if this is set A, and this is set B, you can look at this as a function, f from the set A to the set B, and how does it do it? Well, it takes an L, a number n, any integer there, and it gives you twice that number n. That right there is a function that tells you how to go from this set to that set along these lines here. And all of those lines, all of those pairings up, tell you that this has a one-to-one -one correspondence. Well, that means that there's exactly as many numbers here as there are numbers here because we've paired them all up. Nobody got left out. Everybody got a date and everybody got exactly one date. Now that should be kind of bothersome because this is a proper subset, meaning that it has all, this guy here, all of those elements occur here and there's more of them. There's ones that are over here that aren't over there. And yet I was still able to put it into this one-to-one -one correspondence with this smaller guy. That's actually what mathematicians define as the property of infinity. A set is an infinite set if you can find a one-to-one -one correspondence with it and a proper subset of itself, meaning a set that, that doesn't have all of the elements. It's a subset, so all the elements in this set over here are over here, but this set has elements here that aren't in here. If you can make a one-to-one -one correspondence with some subset, not every subset, just some subset like that, then that's what we mean by infinite. So the fact that we can actually do this with the, with the integers is actually what makes the integers a infinite set. And we can do this with other kinds of, uh, other kinds of sets too. <coughs> For example, you can prove that there are precisely as many numbers, in fact, before I draw the graph here, Let's take a look at the number line here and think about this for a second. So this sometimes represents the real numbers. Maybe it goes from negative infinity to infinity. And every single number that you can find uh, in that's real, no like square root of negative one stuff, every number that's, that's real <coughs> is represented on this infinite number line here. Now you could look at a couple of numbers here, maybe zero and out to one, and ask whether or not how many, how many numbers there are there between zero and one. And it actually turns out that there's exactly as many numbers between zero and one as there are real numbers in general. <clears throat> so for example, I can actually do this with a graph. If I make this sort of my y-axis and make this one my x-axis, so I've got this kind of thing, I can look at a tangent graph that's been appropriately scaled in a little bit, which has an asymptote here and an asymptote there, crosses through at one half and does this. You can actually write down this graph. It's a tangent graph. I won't go into it exactly because the word tangent might not mean something to everybody here. But the point is, is that this graph here represents along it ordered pairs. Every single point here is a point X and F of X, we'll say. We'll call this guy here Y equals F of X. And what this is, like I said, there actually is a formula for f of x. It's a tangent graph that's been scaled to this. In fact, those of you that have ever taken a trigonometry class and talked about scaling, see if you can take the tangent graph and scale it between 0 and 1 to get the graph that I'm showing here. But what happens here is I've got this ordered pair here. x comes out of the open set between 0 and 1. So x is any number between 0 and 1, not including 0 and 1 itself, just the numbers in between. And f of x hits every real number. And the symbol for that we use in math is this guy here. So this represents all the real numbers. And what I've done is I've created a pairing that pairs up something between 0 and 1 with every single real number, meaning that every single number between 0 and 1 has exactly one date with a number that's between negative infinity and infinity. And I've used all the numbers between 0 and 1, and I've used all the numbers from negative infinity to infinity, and they're all paired up with exactly one pair, meaning they all have exactly one date. So that tells you that there is just as many numbers in the entire real line, which is this way, this, this time, and as there are numbers between zero and one. And that's actually what makes the real numbers an infinite set. It's because I can actually put 
uh, a one-to-one -one correspondence between the real numbers, which I've represented with the y-axis here, and a proper subset of itself, zero to one. And that's what makes it infinity. So that's really what infinite means to a mathematician. It's really a number, uh, or sorry, a set is infinite if you can put <clears throat> it into one-to-one -one correspondence with a proper subset of itself. Hey guys, thanks for watching my video today on Philomath Party. If you enjoyed today's video, consider giving it a like and consider maybe subscribing and hitting that notification bell for this channel. It'll help us uh, know what kinds of videos you guys like so we make more of them. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and we'll see you next time.